Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus, and last time we showed that it's correct to call Mary by the title Blessed Mother. This time, the second of the Marian dogmas is Mary perpetually virgin. Of course, when answering this question, we need to know what those words mean. Perpetually means that it continues forever and ever and or always. And a virgin is a person who has never had sex with anyone. So perpetually virgin means always and forever without sex. There are a few steps to showing that this is true about Mary. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Luke 1, 26-27 So we know Mary was a virgin when she was married to Joseph. What about after that? And he knew her not, till she brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Matthew 1, 25 Knew her not is another way of saying they didn't have sex. So when Jesus was born, she was still a virgin. And as we said last episode, Behold, Behold thou shalt thou conceive shalt in thy womb, womb, and shalt bring, bring forth a son, a son and, thou and thou shalt, shalt call, call his, his name, name Jesus. Jesus. And Mary said to the angel, How shall this be done? Because I know not man. Luke one thirty one and 34. This verse shows that Mary was committed to holy celibacy, because if she'd had any intention of having sex with her husband or anyone else, it would be silly to ask the angel how she could give birth. It would have been obvious how. To suggest that Mary would have had other children after Jesus would be to suggest that she made some sort of concrete promise to remain a virgin for the rest of her life, and then, after giving birth to Jesus, broke her vow. However, a critic might say, well, she could have broken her vow anyway. Yes, but if she had, then the following verse would make no sense. When Jesus, therefore, had seen his mother, and the disciples standing whom he loved, he saith to his mother, Woman, behold thy son. After that he saith to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own. John nineteen twenty six to 27 You see, in Jewish law, it was the job of the children to take care of the parents in their old age. In fact, Jesus harshly criticized the Pharisees for violating this very part of the law. So, if Mary had other children, and Jesus, instead of telling those children to care for her, gave her over to John, that would be a violation of the law of God, and therefore a sin, and therefore impossible if Jesus is God, since God can't sin because he's perfect. The only way this verse makes sense is if Jesus was the only child of Mary. Mary's perpetual virginity is also spelled out in full by an early Christian document called the Proto-Evangelium of James, which is believed to have been written within living memory of Mary's death, well within the time frame that historians usually allow for a reliable historical source. In this document, St. Joseph is described as an older man whose main function in wedding Mary was to protect her. The document also says that Joseph had other children from a previous marriage, though, because it's not scripture, this isn't something Catholics are required to believe. In fact, I don't think that last part is likely. So, in the end, there are plenty of good reasons to believe that Mary was perpetually virgin, based on what we know about her from the Gospels. Next time, what kinds of arguments have people made against Mary's perpetual virginity? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.